the ultra-low reflection loss and extreme laser damage resistance of RAR-treated optics is due to nanometer-sized structures etched into the optic surfaces. These randomly distributed, densely packed nanoscopic features form a mechanically durable texture that has a carpet-like appearance. With the scale of the nanotexture being so fine, dust particles or fibers are so large that they can typically be blown off the surface with a light compressed air spray. For other potential contaminants such as epoxy fumes or outgassed hydrocarbons from plastics, or even vaporized material ejected from a nearby optic damaged in your high power laser system, this tutorial will demonstrate simple rinsing and bath techniques that will recover the original condition of your nanotextured optic. To begin, find a well-illuminated, clean, and uncluttered area to allow the safe handling of your high-value nanotextured optic. Next, collect gloves, safety glasses, cleaning chemicals, and handling tools sized for your specific optic. Following semiconductor industry standards, we recommend powder-free nitrile-based gloves, stainless steel or nylon tweezers, baskets, or forks. A source of dry-filtered compressed air or nitrogen, plastic bowls or glass beakers or a drying rack or tray to hold the cleaned optic. Note, a good choice for a drying tray is the custom PETG package in which your nanotextured optic was delivered. Your workbench would also benefit from an inexpensive ionizing fan to prevent static charging that can attract dust particles. When moving your optic, always use a gloved hand and support it by the edge to avoid making contact with the surfaces. Tweezers with a positive grip are best when using a sprayer. Reverse grip tweezers that require no holding force are great if you have to clean many small optics by hand. Basket tools are recommended for batch cleaning. Using the appropriate size tool is critical to keep your optics safe from accidental scratches and digs. With the structure of the nanotextured surface, residues and contaminants are mostly found in the valleys, where they can't be removed by a simple physical wipe. This is also why the conventional drop and drag method is not recommended for nanotextured optics, since dirt can be forced deeper into the texture, making any problem worse. Fortunately, the open nature of the RAR nanotexture allows the valleys to be flushed easily with fluids, and as an all-glass structure, the cleaning fluid can range from simple soap and water to more aggressive chemical cleaners such as ammonia and even most acids. After any chemical cleaning, the dissolved contaminants must be rinsed thoroughly with water. For nanotextured optics, we also recommend using a solvent such as isopropyl alcohol, IPA, as the final rinse step followed by blow drying with compressed air or dry nitrogen. Chemical cleaners such as clear ammonia, hydrogen peroxide, and IPA are widely available with low concentrations that present minimal safety concerns. Always have good ventilation and plenty of water available when following the specific cleaning methods described below. Note, distilled water is recommended over tap water. In a controlled laboratory environment where an actively exhausted workbench is available, the higher purity, higher concentration cleaning fluids shown here allow more aggressive cleaning, but present a greater hazard. Now we'll take you through a series of cleaning steps for a variety of nanotextured optic shapes and sizes. Cleaning begins with removal of the optic from its original PETG package and inspection using a bright light source, such as the fiber guided light shown here, illuminating the optic from the side. For very small optics, you may need a magnifying lens or a video camera with magnification. Start by blowing filtered air from a pressurized can or your lab's compressed air system over the optic to remove any dust particles or fibers. Note, if your laboratory is equipped with dry nitrogen supplied through a filtered nozzle, use a pressure setting around 20 PSI. If you find a particle cannot be removed by blowing, it may be that static charge is holding the particle on the surface. Such a charge can be broken by fluid immersion. Try rinsing the optic with IPA. IPA evaporates rapidly and rinses cleanly. Holding the optic vertically, spray IPA at the top and allow the fluid to rinse over the whole surface and drip into a collection sink or bowl or onto a wipe. Hold vertically for a few seconds while the IPA sheets off the optic. An air or nitrogen blow can help to dry the optic more rapidly. As a next step, if your optic needs further cleaning, immerse in a bath of warm water and simple dish soap with agitation for five to 10 seconds. Then rinse with distilled water from a squeeze bottle or in a bowl. 
Ammonia is an exceptional glass cleaning fluid that can be used as a more aggressive alternative to soap and water. We recommend using ammonia in a glass beaker in a well-ventilated area, taking care to avoid breathing any ammonia fumes. A few seconds immersion with agitation is sufficient, followed by rinsing in distilled water and IPA with blow dry as described above. In our clean room here at Tel Aztec, we routinely apply all the techniques described above, often using multiple cycles of both ammonia and IPA immersion. One way to make the simple IPA rinsing more effective is to use a pressurized sprayer, a simple painter's airbrush with changeable nozzles to vary the fluid force and spray area works very well with low hazard. As we close this tutorial, we show spray cleaning for a wide variety of RAR nanotextured optics using the recommended immersion, rinse, and dry methods. We want you to get the maximum benefit from your RAR nanotextured optic. So please call or email any questions, comments, or concerns about cleaning for your application.